Danny Dick's press, it might seem a little hairy, but you gotta stay rigid. We got to hit four to six there, and he got the six, and I think the great start to this workout. Next, uh, we're gonna reduce the weight. He's gonna need it 10 to 15. Final set, we'll reduce it a little bit more. And he's gonna hit 25 to 30. This is, we're starting off here, four exercises of breakdowns. Okay. Okay, bodybuilding circles usually encompass two kinds of individuals. The kind that say go heavy or go home or the ones that just want to worship the almighty pump. You gotta have both. To fully maximize your physique, you're gonna have to take a holistic and uh, you know approach. Things rarely in life are black and white and bodybuilding training is one of those things. This is not dating. You do not have to be exclusive to either one of these methods. So this means high reps, low reps, fast, you know, fast tempo, slow tempo you know, longer rest period, shorter rest period, so on and so forth for a holistic approach. The method we started off today was called breakdowns. It's devised by my mentor, Dr. Fred Hatfield. And he's used it with a lot of famous bodybuilders. He trained, you know, Lee Haney, you know, for the Olympia. He trained Michael Quinn, one of the, you know, most underrated bodybuilders of all time. And so what the idea is here, you're gonna start off with a weight you can do four to six reps with. You wanna go heavy, obviously. So you go as heavy as you can for four to six reps. Then you reduce that weight by you know you know 15 to 20 percent, and then you want to hit 10 to 15 reps. Then you further reduce that, and the last set you're gonna go 25 to 30 reps is the goal. Okay, so the, these are just guidelines; they don't have to be exact, you know. Uh, but that's a good good starting point for guidelines. For the rest periods in between sets, we want to go two to three minutes. Okay, and um, so tell a little about the workout today. This is, you know, we, we did our own kind of version of it today though. So it's, I call it the four quarters workout because we're going, you know, I like football, you know, four quarters, last quarters on the goal line. You see nothing but elbows and assholes. You're gonna charge straight ahead. We take that kind of mentality right here with the workout today. So we did four exercises, starting off with a close grip, uh, decline press. That's one of my favorite tricep builders. I even use that with world-class bench pressers and, um, you know, so we took Jay a closer to normal grip, you know, about shoulder width the part. We're not going ultra close. Don't want to pull that strain on the wrists and elbows. Plus we can throw around a little more pig iron with that grip. So close grip decline press is how we started off. Next, we went on the Hercules uh, chin up. That's, a cre as I mentioned earlier, that's a creation of the jailhouse strong system. So what you do, chin up, that means a supinated grip uh, or your palms, you know, facing you for people that are less scientific watching. Um, and we love you too. So anyways, you want the palms facing you. You go all the way up like a normal chin up. You come halfway down, hold that position isometrically, squeeze your biceps for two seconds, go back to the, t the top, and then you go all the way, then you go all the way down. That is one repetition. So for that, you know, you gotta vary, you know, you're not gonna be able to do 25 reps that way. So, you know, so we went, you know, the lowest reps, medium reps, highest reps. So it ended up being four, six, then eight on the last set. Load up, and obviously you're gonna load those up if you can. Up, ooh, ooh, ooh. up, ooh, yep. ooh. up, ooh, yeah. ooh. up, ooh, yeah. ooh. up, ooh. up, ooh. up, ooh. up, ooh. up, 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 so this one, the, the rep count's a little funky here because we started off with four, which is really like eight, and then it goes to six and so on and so forth. So kind of concept basically, because um, it's a little different here, you can look at time under tension, things like that, to you know go, go for X amount of seconds or whatever, but what the, you want to keep the spirit the same. Heaviest, lowest reps, lowest amount of time or tension to start off, in with uh, the lightest and lowest amount of time, and the lightest and highest amount of time or tension at the end, and that's breakdowns. Okay, from there, we went on to the overhead, um, the overhead dicks press, and this has nothing to do with your wiener schnitzel. So get your head out of your, you know what, and then focus on what I'm talking about here. So what you do, this is a lot. This is more deceiving than you think it is, and I've used this with a lot of, um, you know, top level strongman, you know, and I've also used it for myself when I was uh, training for Strongest Man America 2005. Oh, you know, the over overhead press is one of the events, and I'd never trained standing overhead presses and didn't even rarely train seated overhead presses. So I had to, you know, make some expedited process fast. You know, it was, a, there was cash on the line. I was in the poorhouse, 
And you know, I had to keep my daily habit of Waffle House every day going, so I needed some cash. And it, you know, came up with the overhead dex press just by some, done it with bench press before. It's like, why can't you do it standing? And I did, ended up um, winning the event. So anyways, what you do, you just take the barbell, you you know, as you'll see in the video, uh, lift it arm's length above head with a close grip. Uh, you take it down to right in front of your forehead. You go, you kind of skim the top of your head behind your forehead, go back to the front, press it back up and um, you get a feel good stretch in your triceps and you go a little bit heavier here than you can on the traditional uh, French press. This is not only will build your triceps and take you to a new level of fatigue, but it will um, it will also be a lot stronger. So, I mean, even if you're training purely for bodybuilding, I mean, who doesn't want to be a, a little bit stronger? So from there, we went to the incline uh, dumbbell hammer curls. And what we do there, um, want to really hit the brachialis there. If you, that's, you know, one of the keys to getting a quote unquote big bicep is developing that muscle. It's going to be the illusion of a much bigger bicep. And, um, you know, at the end of the day on the stage, it's all about what illusion you've created. So, um, and th these, re these do real well with a slower tempo. So what we did is a normal speed on the way up, five second negative, again, modifying the load because there's that five second negative. So you do, we went from um, four reps, um, to eight reps, to or excuse me, from three reps to six reps to 12 reps. And you think about it, it's 12 reps, it's not like ultra high, like 25 to 30 re you know, reps, but you're on five seconds. So that, that alone, when you do that 12 reps, we got 60 seconds and just a negative. So, um, you know, this is, you know, this is that, that's a breakdown portion of the workout. And it, it actually, um, you know, echoes a studies, uh, echoes a study we saw from Japan a few years back where people did a five by five workout and then one group at that five by five workout, there's two groups, one did a traditional five by five workout, the other did a five by five workout and added a set of 20, a back off set at the end. The, the, um, the guys, the people that added the set of 20 um, actually even had better strength gains, but you know, much better gains and muscle hypertrophy. So we did those four exercises, boom, four quarters. We all, then we finished off with the um, four exercises of um, cluster sets. So you go, you do each cluster set for four minutes. You do six repetitions, rest 15 seconds, repeat that sequence for four minutes. And it's gonna be, where, how much weight you use is gonna be, um, you know, at least something you do 15 reps with because you're pretty fatigued at the end of the workout here and you have to play around a little bit to find that. But the goal is to finish that with the same weight you started, but be very fatigued at the end of the set. And, um, you know, so you got all four of those, you know, those four exercises, four minute cluster sets. You got your four quarter work down with breakdowns, and so what do you think of the workout today, Jack? It was it was one of, it was one of the harder ones, definitely, um, especially the uh, the overhead dicks press, which is uh, foreign to me. It was my first time ever doing it, but like you was explaining, um, you know, when you start from here, the key to going back is to make sure you get a stretch in your triceps. That's what actually hurts the most. To be honest with you, is the stretch, and then come back up and press. Um, one thing though. A little bit more difficult for me in the video to keep my elbows in, um, but you definitely want to make sure you keep your elbows in a lot more, so you can make sure you're actually hitting your triceps. But that was definitely difficult. And, and with all that, you know, all that that's gonna be be a little individual variance in that. On the, um, you know, just tell when you're overhead pressing if somebody's, you know, got, you know, you know, he, biceps that big, he's probably not gonna bring the barbell all the way, you know down to his collarbone. So, I mean, that, there is gonna be a little air and variance there, but he, you know, as long as, you know, this is getting back to body and feel, you feel that good stretch in your in your triceps. And at the end of the day, if, if you're using, you know, 95 pounds and getting a good stretch feel in your triceps, that's better than using, you know, 120 and, you know, just bamboozling the weight with, um, you know, momentum. The Hercules chin-ups, those were, those were just as difficult. Um, same thing though, the thing is, is when you when you come down halfway after you do the full pull up, and you come and you actually come down halfway, you literally you got to make sure you're actually squeezing your biceps. You know when you come down halfway and you hold it for two seconds, you know then and then you come all the way back up. The key is to remember to make sure you fully come all the way down and stretch the biceps out. Um, same thing, you know it's not that difficult of a moment, but if it's something that you haven't done before and you're not comfortable with doing it probably don't want to start off with chains loading it first but just try it with just body weight first absolutely you may have to use a little bit of assistance on a machine or band and um i think that's good that's one of the the advantages of having um somebody like jay come out here not only is he um you know obviously a professional bodybuilder so it's obviously exciting you know to work with somebody like that out here but then the flip side is he's also um 
you know, I'm pretty snobby in who I'd recommend anybody to personal train with, but I, I've definitely sent people his way before because um, I like the work that he does. So he, he's got an intuitive mind-muscle connection, but beyond that, he's been able to teach that to others. So he, you, you, that's the thing, as you guys think about it, a lot of times, um, you know, when we're making these videos, we're, yeah, we're trying to help people out and stuff, but there's a selfish aspect to it too. The best way to learn more is to teach other people, and he's been able to do that and teach other people. So he's got that superior mind muscle connection. So like for instance, on the on the Hercules chin up, I mean, you could not think about your biceps at all and kind of just muscle up and you'd still get something out of it because um, before I'd ever thought about bodybuilding at all or like, you know, have trained ever for any sort of muscle hypertrophy, one iota or trained anybody for, I remember it very vividly. I was at um, Moore Park College and I was um, going down there to train at their gym when I was in like a senior in high school and um, Guy who's uh, coaching me in powerlifting, Steve Hall, on the program, we had lap pull downs and um, with a reverse grip. They didn't have a lap pull down machine, I, or I guess they did, but someone broke it and, you know, damn college don't fix it. So, anyways, I um, figured, okay, you know, what's the next best thing to do? Uh, aha, it's a vertical pull with a supinated grip. They got a bar right there, so I wasn't doing any pull ups at all at the time. Um, so I just jumped up there and started busting out pull-ups with a reverse grip, not thinking at all about my biceps. And even though I was doing like hammer curls and, and things like that, and easy curls primarily at the time, um, I, um, I couldn't believe how pumped up my biceps were and how sore they were the next day. And that wasn't really thinking with any sort of you know, mind-muscle connection. So you bring an individual like this, you know, did these with Corey Matthews too, IFBB Pro, people like that that are, that are sharp mentally, Plus, they have the intuitive mind-muscle connection. It's a deadly combination. Josh Bryant signing off with IFBB Pro, Jay Warren with your four-quarters workout. And this can be applied to any, to, you know, to any opposing body parts you want to work.